This week on Channel 8 News, we take a look at House of Hope Haiti, The Glow Run, a talent show, grocery bingo, and more. Channel 8 News starts right now. Thank you for tuning into Channel 8 News. I'm Anastasia Tuttle. And I'm Alex Sanchez. This week, Northwest is mourning the loss of a fellow Bearcat taken too soon. David Cancor was a freshman geology major from Maryland Heights, Missouri. Last week, Cancor was found dead in his room in Dietrich Hall. The death is under investigation by the Nottoway County Coroner's Office and University Police. Northwest encourages students needing counseling assistance outside of regular business hours to contact University Police at 660-562 one, two, five, four. Faculty and staff should call the University Employee Assistance Program at 800-964-3577. A county council support line also is available to members of the Northwest community at 888-279-8188. Our hearts are with David's family and friends through this tough time. Last Wednesday evening, Hayden Ali had the opportunity to attend House of Hope Haiti. Hayden? Every year, the Bridge Church, located in Maryville, hosts an annual variety show to raise funds for House of Hope Haiti. I was able to talk to Dr. Bio about what exactly it is House of Hope Haiti does. House of Hope is a Christ-centered, mission-focused organization that caters to the needs of some orphans, as well as provide opportunities for children who otherwise would not have the opportunity to go to school. Bio says there is much to do in Haiti. There are so many needs in Haiti. One of the biggest needs is education. We realized that even the children who were in the first orphanage, some, there were some who were coming from the mountain villages to come to school, hiking every day, back and forth. So we said, what about providing them an opportunity to get an education? This year's funds will be going towards the House of Hope Haiti's budget for higher education. But the whole idea behind that is that, again, as funds are raised, the various needs in Haiti, particularly the need to fund higher education or vocational training for the children in the orphanage who are now growing up and who will soon be aging out of the orphanage. The night starts off with a nice home-cooked meal and then moves into a silent auction, ranging from anything from food all the way up to a Bible set. And then the night ends with many different performances, ranging from music when I was far away. to comedy, magic, and even dancing. Making all this a fun night for a good cause. This has been Hayden Ali reporting for KNWT Channel 8 News. Thanks, Hayden. Last Thursday night, Craig Richard attended Sachs' annual grocery bingo. Craig? Last Wednesday, the Student Activity Council held their annual grocery bingo, where you were able to play bingo for free to win free groceries. So grocery bingo is kind of like a long string tradition for SAC. So it was implemented several years ago and basically it's just kind of one of those events that we do every single semester under late night. Grocery bingo had a great turnout. Students explained the reason why they came out to play bingo. Because I really wanted free groceries because we don't have a lot of money to go buy a lot of groceries. So it would be nice not to eat at the union every day. <laughs> I heard about free groceries and free food is always dragging me in. The competition quickly heated up in the union. A couple students discussed their strategies for winning. I tried to stay calm because I felt like when I got angry, they were like, oh, clear your boards. So when I stayed calm, I won. There isn't a strategy. I was hoping for luck, but I didn't get any tonight. I think it's actually rigged. I was two away five different times in a row. So the strategy was to bless it, and it didn't work. Honestly, I mean, just try to listen up for every single number and 
I mean, that's all I can pretty much say. It's bingo. It's just kind of the luck of the draw. An important part of the student activities console is bringing students together. Students discuss how they accomplish this tonight. All the main events for SAC are just to provide for the students and basically to have all of them have a fun time and basically meet other students on campus and get to know people. The Student Activity Council hosts many events throughout the school year. Callie discussed the upcoming SAC events. Um, well, I mean, we have walkout day, which is that Friday during homecoming week. Basically, we'll have hot air balloons and everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's at 4.30 over at the intramural fields. And then, I mean, the next late night event we have is late night at the rec. That's also a big one. We have free pizza. We'll have an inflatable dodgeball uh, court for anyone who wants to play. But, I mean, we have several things throughout the semester. In December, we have Chase Rice. Everything's listed on our website and then on the university calendars. This has been Craig Richard reporting for KNWT Channel 8. Thanks, Craig. When we come back, we'll take a look at your Northwest event report. Don't go away. Welcome back to Channel 8 News, I'm Anastasia Tuttle. And I'm Alex Sanchez, and this is your Northwest Event Report. On Monday, October 9th, voting for homecoming royalty begins. You can vote through Cap Haas and voting ends Friday, October 13th. On Monday, October 9th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion are hosting a National Coming Out Day series leading up to National Coming Out Day. Students are invited to write positive and encouraging quotes and messages to decorate the inside of a door. The door will encourage individuals to know that they will be supported and encouraged. On National Coming Out Day, the door will stand open in a student union and display the notes of positivity and support. On Tuesday, October 10th, from 12 to 1 p.m. in the Union Tower View Dining Room, local attorney David Bard will explain various alternatives as we discuss and navigate through the maze of trust, will, non-probate transfers, and other estate planning tools as well as discussing documents you should have now, including living wills and durable power of attorney. On Wednesday, October 10th, from 3 to 4 p.m., the Bard will also be speaking in the Foster Fitness Center room 106 over the same topics. On Thursday, October 12th, from 1 to 2 p.m., psychology majors can learn more information on the Psychology Study Abroad program to Ireland that takes place this summer. This, this informational series will be held in the Colton Hall. Starting Friday, October 13th until Sunday, October 15th, Northwest will host its fifth annual disaster response training. Missouri Hope 2017 is an intense three-day domestic disaster relief field training experience that is required for students studying majors or minors in emergency disaster management. This event takes place at Mazingo Outdoor Recreation Area and the Mazingo Youth Camp. If you're interested in volunteering to play the role of disaster victims, you can contact Dr. Peter Adam at padam at nwmissouri.edu. On Friday, October 13th, starting at 7 p.m. in the Union Ballroom, you are invited to join the Office of Student Involvement in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for a free tasting event to sample desserts from throughout the world. On Sunday, October 15th, Homecoming Week begins. The events are open to all Northwest students, alumni, faculty, staff, family, friends, and community members. The theme for this year is Bearcats Around the World. For more information about when all the events occur, you can go to www.nwmissouri.edu slash get involved slash homecoming. On Sunday, October 15th, from 2 to 4 p.m. in the B.D. Owens Library, personnel from Northwest Financial Aid Office will be on hand to answer questions and assist students and families with completing the FAFSA online. The event is open to all students, including high school seniors, current college students, and non-traditional students. Students who attend this event will receive free assistance with filling out FAFSA and a chance to win a scholarship for enrollment. Students should bring the student and parents' FSA ID information, a list of schools to which a student has been applied, been accepted, or is interested in attending, and student parent with 2016 W-2 forms or a tax return copies. For more information about the event, you can contact the Office of Scholarship and Financial Assistance by calling 660-562-1363. Once again, that number is 660-562-1363, or you can email the office at finaid at nwmissouri.edu. 
Relief for victims of Hurricane Irma donations will be accepted at the Lutheran Campus Center until Tuesday, October 24th. Donations can be left in the box right inside the LCC front door. Items being collected include non-perishable foods such as peanut butter, packaged tuna, and canned goods. They will also be accepting diapers and clothing and gift cards. Any monetary donations will be designated toward shipping costs. Leftover funds will be used to purchase additional goods and all items that are collected will be shipped to Faith Lutheran Church Food Pantry in Sebring, Florida to be directly distributed to people in need. That's all for your Northwest Event Report. When we come back, we'll take a look at some recent news and events. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. I'm Alex Sanchez. And I'm Anna Zedra Tuttle. Last Thursday evening, Mary Grace Rice had the opportunity to attend Open Mic Night held in the Union Living Room. Mary Grace? On Thursday, Mike Maddock hosted a talent show for students to show off their various talents. Mike spoke about why he hosted this event. Um, I ran into a couple guys last year that played just phenomenal guitar. They're not around anymore. And I thought, oh, that's too bad. And I thought, well, I, there's got to be a forum to get folks so that people can hear those guys. And so then we thought, okay, let's just see what, we, what will come of this. And so we've scheduled eight of these, one a month, and we'll just see how it goes. And I'm really excited about tonight because tonight we had two students perform, which was great, and we had a bunch of people. So I'm hoping that this grows. Along with the students, Mike performed his talent, playing the guitar and singing. He discussed how he got into music. Picked up guitar at 16 and found a teacher here, found a teacher there, learned different things and just kind of built through the years and it just sort of, you do it long enough, it just starts developing more. And so music is just a really fun, just a great part of my life. Mike then gave his opinion on the students' performances. I thought they were excellent. It was really a nice surprise. I had no idea. I've never heard anything they'd done before. I never met them before and I was just, it was amazing stuff. So I was very pleased. I'm glad we're doing this because this is, I want more and more students to come and just perform and just show people what they know, what they do, and their creativity, because there's a lot of it. Dawson Leapley, a student at Northwest, freestyle rapped at the show. He explained how he started rapping. Well, I've always been to rap music, and then I um, just thought maybe I can do this because I can rap to songs, and then I started writing, and then now I'm freestyling with it. It takes guts to stand up in front of an audience and perform. Dawson discussed why he decided to rap in the talent show. My peer advisor through Trio told me I should because I freestyled for her one day uh, during one of our meetings. I thought I might be able to get out in front of people. Finally, Dawson explained why he is so passionate about rapping. Being able to get your feelings out, it's more of a, like a therapy session for me. Um, I'm always in my feels with it, so I rap about my story, but today is just having fun. One woman who attended the show discussed the students' performances and gave her opinion on them. Dawson, um, who was freestyle rapping, I mean, uh, what an incredible talent that is. It's not just the, just words, it's so much emotion, I mean, uh, when you, uh, listen to the message. There's a lot of feeling, a lot of emotion, um, and there's extremely moving and his uh, just gift for being able to put all that together. I mean, that, that's just an incredible talent. And you can see he's very passionate about what he was doing. I didn't catch the name of the second student that uh, performed or whatever, but did spoken word. And uh, I believe we had a anagram of uh, the words, uh, society is failing. And um, once again, very emotional um, from his heart. Um, he was able to string together um, several phrases that uh, just really brought a lot of emotion and passion to what he was talking about. Sometimes we have that sense that, uh, that society is failing um, politically and, and economically and socially. 
um, he really, really brought that to life. You could feel, you could feel what he was feeling when he was saying that. Both of these individuals really, really uh, performing stuff from their heart that was original and Im impressive. There is one talent show every month, and the next one is on November 9th, so stop by the Union Living Room if you are interested in performing in or watching the talent show. This has been Mary Grace Rice reporting for KNWT Channel 8. Thanks, Mary Grace. Last Saturday night, Audrey Chappelle attended the 5K Glow Run. Audrey? The Northwest Dietetic Association held their seventh annual 5K run last Saturday. This annual glow run raises money for backpack buddies. The run began by the administration building and continued around the campus. Participants came from all over the community to donate and race in the 5K. Kendall Stagner, the president of the Tietetic Association, said this was a fun way to get the community together for a good cause. And we're hoping to make it more of a community event and uh, kind of bring the community together at the same time and also a way to raise money as well. Backpack Buddies is a weekend feeding program that gives a backpack full of non-perishable food items to children in need. Children of Nottaway County Schools who have free or reduced lunches are eligible to receive the food. For every $1,000 raised, at least six children can be fed for about a year. Rachel Quick and Mackenzie Clark ran the 5K and said this event was very rewarding in many ways. It's fun to just do it and it's obviously rewarding to finish it all, but it's also good that like we got a shirt, but whenever we paid for it, we were helping too. We yeah. were trying to like... It's rewarding it. physically for us, but it's <laughs> like in the long run, it's way better for other people that need it. Over 20 people attended and it's estimated they raised over $300. So we'd just like to thank everybody that did come out here to donate. We'd like to thank all of our runners and we'd like to thank all of our sponsors. We greatly appreciate all of the, appreciate all the donations we've received. Reporting for Channel 8, I'm Audrey Chappelle. Thanks, Audrey. When we come back, we'll take a look at some national headlines. Don't go away. Channel 8 News, I'm Anastasia Tuttle. And I'm Alex Sanchez. Last Sunday night, a shooter opened fire over a music festival in Las Vegas, Nevada. The shooter was identified as 64-year-old Stephen Paddock. 22,000 people attended this music festival. Hundreds were injured and 59 people were killed. Police said that Paddock had cameras set up watching the music festival and watching his shooting take place from his hotel room on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Police are calling this shooting the deadliest mass murder in modern U.S. history. Paddock ended up committing suicide but before police could reach his hotel room during the shooting. Our hearts are with everyone affected by this event. If you are looking for a missing loved one, call 800-536-9488. Wells Fargo just accused of lying to Congress last year by failing to disclose a brewing scandal in the bank's auto insurance scandal. In July, Wells Fargo admitted that it forced auto insurance as many as 570,000 borrowers who didn't need it. About 20,000 of those customers had the cars wrongfully repossessed in part due to the, these unwanted insurance charges. Wells Fargo has said it first came aware of the auto insurance debacle a year earlier in July 2016. After customers complained, Wells Fargo CEO John Stumpf didn't disclose any of this information to Congress in the September 2016 hearing about the fake accounts that the bank created. Wells Fargo began suing refunds last month to customers hurt by the forced insurance. The bank said it expects all impacted borrowers to be reimbursed by mid-2018. President Donald Trump attacked San Juan mayor over how she criticized the White House hurricane relief efforts in Puerto Rico. Trump accused her of poor leadership and suggested that the island's residents aren't doing enough for themselves. Nearly two weeks after Hurricane Maria pummeled the island of Puerto Rico, President Donald Trump touched down for the first time to bury the hatchet with the mayor of San Juan and immediately downplayed the devastation. Trump's post-storm visit checked all the boxes. He was briefed by local and federal officials, toured a residential neighborhood to speak to locals about storm damage, and doled out emergency supplies at a church. 
She did it all while lauding the disaster relief response. Trump stated, the job that has been done here really is nothing short of a miracle. Earlier in the day, he offered his administration an A-plus grade for its disaster relief efforts in Texas and Florida, adding that Puerto Rico was right up there with them. At one point, Trump handed out flashlights saying, you don't need them anymore. The president remarked, by last Tuesday, power had been restored to less than 7% of Puerto Rico. More than half the island still doesn't have access to drinkable water or telecommunications systems. Rock legend Tom Petty died last Monday at the age of 66. Petty suffered from cardiac arrest in his home and was rushed to the hospital but could not be revived. He passed away peacefully surrounded by family, friends and bandmates. Tom Petty's daughter was angered by news sources releasing information about his death before he had even died. Many news sources said that Petty had died anywhere between the hours of 3 to 4 p.m. that Monday. But his, long line, his longtime manager, Tony Dimitriades, and his daughter, Anna Kim Violet Petty, reported those sources to be false and that he wasn't dead yet. Later to be confirmed that he died peacefully at 8 p.m. that Monday night. The NFL may be stealing all the headlines when it comes to its national anthem spat with President Donald Trump. But women's professional basketball has been consistently taking an even greater stand on its biggest stage. For the first four games of their WNBA final series against the Minnesota Lynx, the entire Los Angeles Sparks team has remained in the locker room, even staging a collective walkout before game one to, clatter, to a clatter of boos. The Sparks teams will likely repeat the gesture to raise awareness of racial injustice. Will Japan win the flying car race? A group of Japanese inventors are working on an ambitious plan to launch a flying car, the SkyDrive, by the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. The Cartivator Project, which is a Tokyo-based nonprofit, is leading the futuristic pursuit, and it has a special ambition for the vehicle. The SkyDrive has three wheels, four rotors, and uses, a, and uses drone technology. If successful, it would fly at an altitude of 33 feet, reach top airborne speeds at 62 miles per hour, and zoom along at 93 miles per hour on land. The SkyDrive will be a 9.5 9 feet long, 4.2 feet wide and 3.6 feet high. Cartivator, Cartivator claims that one seater would be the world's smallest flying car. Companies in the US, United Arab Emirates, Germany, Netherlands and China are also trying to develop flying cars, which means some competition of Japan. Well, that's all we have for this week. For more information on stories that matter to you, like us on Facebook at backslash watch channel 8 news and follow us on Twitter at KNWT 8 news. The KXCV Bearcat Coaches Show is up next. From all of us here at Channel 8 News, I'm Anastasia Tuttle. And I'm Alex Sanchez. Have a good night.